Hey, good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you for joining us again for these uh, Hope Will Rise devotions. We're doing this every morning uh, during the month of April as we're in this teaching series called Hope Will Rise. I hope you had a fantastic Easter, um, and I know it was different, and I know it was a little weird, but I really enjoyed our live stream. I'm so grateful that we have the technology that we do, and let me tell you something. We are going to get back together again, okay? Um, I, I'm not sure what the timing is, but I know that eventually, as a church, we are going to be back together again, and we're going to be in person. Um, we're going to do that, you know, safely, and we're going to follow the recommendations of people that are really smart and helping us make those decisions. Um, but I, I just know that the church is going to be back together again gathering. I, I also know this about the church, that the church is, is a church that is gathered and scattered, and, uh, and right now, we're in one of those scattered seasons. And, and I just want to encourage you um, to have an imagination of what it looks like to be the church, um, to be the church together as a family, um, to uh, be a church that encourages your neighbors. Maybe you can't do that in person right now, but you can figure out ways. I, I believe in you. And so I want to encourage you to be the scattered church. And, uh, and then God will bring us back together when it is time for us to come back together. This is, this is the church's, um, this is a great opportunity for the church. Um, and uh, this could be one of our finest hours um, to show what it looks like for us to remain faithful to the resurrected Christ, um, to remain faithful to one another as the church, even though we're not meeting together face to face, and also to show that we have an imagination um, and we can adjust and, uh, and, and love people around us well as God is calling us to do that in this season. So I, I just think this is a, a great opportunity for us, and, uh, and I want to encourage you to continue to lean into that. Today we're going to be in, in the Gospel of Mark. Um, this past week we were, went, went through the last week of Jesus. Um, so now we're going to jump back into the Gospel of Mark, and we're going to be in chapter, two, uh, chapter 1, and uh, we're going to be at the end of chapter 1 in verse 40. It says this, that there was a man with leprosy came to him, came to Jesus, and begged Jesus on his knees, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and he touched the man. And Jesus said, I am willing, be clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cured. Let's start in verse 42 where it says immediately. You're going to see this kind of thing all throughout the gospel according to Mark. If you read through the, the entire gospel according to Mark, you will see there's this immediacy. There's this, there's this sense of um, urgency with Mark's gospel. And I would ask you, why do you think that is? Um, what, what do you think Mark is communicating to his audience? What do you think Mark is communicating to you? as you are reading the gospel. Um, but you will pick that up. And this is just one of those places where he says immediately. It's just a sense of like, man, Jesus touched this man and he was healed. Immediately, the, the leprosy left his body. Here's the other thing that comes to mind for me is uh, I see this man with leprosy and he gets down on his knees and he begs Jesus um, to heal him. And he, <laughs> immediately I, I, I go to the moment whenever I ask Nicole to marry me. Uh, we, uh, we, we were actually, it's really cool, we were in Athens, Greece on a trip um, in college and I knew this was the girl that I wanted to marry. And, uh, and so I carried that ring with me all the way across the, um, all, all the way across the ocean on the plane. I didn't let it leave my side. It was in my backpack. It was, it was on me at all times. And, uh, and it was burning a hole in my pocket. And then we went to the Olympic stadium there in Athens. And that's where I asked her and I got down on my knee and, and I said, like, if you're willing to marry me, I would love to marry you. And, uh, you know, and so that comes to mind. And, uh, and then Jesus reaches out and touches this man's hand. And, and in the same way, like uh, Nicole reached out her hand and she touched my hand as a, as a way of affirming me and confirming what I felt like God was calling me to, confirming my courage, confirming my, my risk to ask her um, for her hand in marriage. And Jesus touches this man uh, with leprosy. Now, I didn't have leprosy, but I did, I did marry up. Um, but, um, you know, he touches this man with leprosy, which in this time period, in the first century, touching a person with leprosy was a huge no-no, especially 
for a rabbi because if you were to touch him, one, you, would, you could potentially get leprosy yourself. But according to the law, if you were even in the presence of someone with leprosy, then you would made, be made unclean and then you would be pushed outside or marginalized outside of the community. So you could see as a rabbi who was inside teaching in the temple that you shouldn't be in the presence of a leper. But Jesus came to do things differently. He came for the marginalized. He came for the outcast. And he touches this man. He takes his hand. He confirms his, his courage. He confirms the risk that he made. He confirms the request that he, is, he wants to be made well. And Jesus said, I am willing. I am willing and what I want you to hear is that when we enter into a relationship with Jesus, it is like whenever I extended my hand to Nicole to ask her to marry me, that, that, I, that Jesus has extended his hand to me to ask for my hand in a covenant relationship, that I am the bride of Christ and he is the groom. And so, so we see this covenant happening between this man who was, who was sick, who was an outcast, who couldn't be a part of the religious system. He extends his hand and says, if you're willing, and Jesus says, of course I'm willing. That's why I came. I came for the sick. I came for the hurting. I came for the sinners. This is the heart of the Father. He came for the sinner. He came for the leper. He came for the tax collector. He came for you and for me. He came for those of us who have greed in our heart and lust in our heart and, and, and selfishness in our heart and our ego gets the best of us. And, we, and we, he came for us. And we come begging on our knees, but Jesus takes our hand as the sinner and says, of course I'm willing. That's why I came. I came to heal you. I came to heal your soul. What great hope. No matter where we find ourselves, we extend our hand and Jesus takes us by the hand. The religious system says, no, 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 you got to clean yourself up. And Jesus says, no, you don't. I came to meet you where you are. Gosh, I just want you to hear that. Wherever you find yourself right now, whatever you've done, whatever secret you're carrying around, whatever rocks you're carrying around on your back, whatever guilt and shame and fear, whatever it is, if you've been sinned against or you have sinned against someone else, whatever it is, Jesus says, of course I'm willing. That's why I came, was to be in a covenant relationship with you. Be healed and walk in freedom. That's hope. That's hope. There is so much more to come. Your sin no longer defines you. You are defined by the covenant of Jesus. Let me pray for us. God, thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for taking our hand. Thank you for coming to us and meeting us where we are. We, are, we were lepers. We are lepers. And you extended your hand and took us by the hand and you healed us. And, and then you invited us into freedom. So I pray that my friends would accept that this morning, that they would offer their hand to you they would offer their life to you. And Jesus, we thank you that you heal us and that you make us whole. It's in your name we pray. Amen and amen. Have a wonderful day, my friends. You can catch up on all these videos on our YouTube channel and uh, follow along on Facebook and YouTube and, uh, and share them with your friends if you think it would be encouraging to them. So have a wonderful, wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow.